Hello, my name is Miss Suzanne and I work at the Cumberland County Public Library. Do you like stories about heroes, monsters, and supernatural beings? Then you might like mythology. Myths are traditional stories that are told from cultures around the world. Sometimes they can be strange or even violent. So if you get upset by one, be sure to talk to a parent or trusted adult. The Greek myths are some of the most famous ones, and that's mainly what I'm going to be telling you about today. They're still popular today, but they started being told many, many centuries ago in ancient times. Here's a statue of one of the most famous Greek goddesses. Do you know who she is? Her name was Athena. She was believed to be in charge of all wisdom, wars, and crafts. Her symbol is the owl. She sometimes liked to help mortals, and she was thought to have aided the Greek hero Odysseus in getting home safely after a war. He ran into a lot of obstacles getting home, but she helped him. We'll hear more about Odysseus in a few minutes. Did you know that the Greek Empire, which was around the Mediterranean Sea, was, it was huge, but it was eventually taken over by the Roman Empire, which was even bigger. And the Romans adopted many things they liked from the Greeks, including stories about the Greek gods and goddesses. For example, Poseidon was the Greek god of the sea, but the Romans took over his stories and called him Jupiter. Here's a picture of what some people thought he might look like. As you can tell, he lived in the sea. He was the brother of the king of the gods, Zeus, and his trident, or three-pronged spear, and the dolphin are his symbols. Now, Poseidon was very important to the Greeks. Can you think about why that might have been? He's in the sea, and the Greeks live near a sea called the Mediterranean. Well, they did most of their traveling by boat, so he was very, it was very important to be on the good side of this god, Poseidon. Here's one of the temples where people used to worship Poseidon in ancient times, and they worshiped a lot of the Greek gods and goddesses. Now I have some books to tell you about, as you can see here. Um, and I'm going to tell you first about this book. It's called, Oh My, Gods and Goddesses, Mythology. And it's written by an author named Basher. Now, he writes a lot of books about history and science, and they're really funny. They have cute illustrations and lots of fun facts, and the library owns a lot of them. In this book, you're going to learn all about the major gods and goddesses of Greece and the Norse gods and goddesses and Egyptian mythology as well. So you can check that out at the library. And this book, which you can see has Thor on the front, who was from the Norse area. This is called Myths, Legends, and Sacred Stories, a visual encyclopedia. This book has stories from all over the world, including Oceania. Do you know where that is? I did not know where it was until I read this. It is Australia and all the islands in the Pacific around her. And th this is probably for upper elementary, more advanced readers. This one also is for more advanced readers. It's called Gods and Heroes, Mythology Around the World by Corwin Briggs. And this one is going to include myths from places and cultures you have probably never even heard of before. All the books I've shown you here on the left or on the right um, will tell pe help you understand about what myths are and why they were told. And here are some fiction books, too, that will tell you about mythological characters. The first one is a Pegasus series by Kate O'Hearn. It's a fantasy series for upper elementary school, even middle school students. It's action-packed and fast-paced. The main character, Emily, has a lot of adventures after the winged horse Pegasus lands on her roof of her Manhattan apartment building. And after this, she gets drawn into the world of the Roman gods and into a very bad war. And throughout the series, Emily and Pegasus and the other gods and goddesses travel back and forth from the earth to Olympus. 
and have a lot of exciting adventures. Another series is called Goddess Girls by Joan Holub and Suzanne Williams. And these were written for ages 9 to 12, but of course, some of you have uh, different reading levels and different interests, so don't let that stop you if you, if you think it's interesting. This series is focused on the adventures of different Greek goddesses when they were tweens or teens and what happened to them. Now the next series is written by the same authors as Goddess Girls. It's called Heroes in Training. It's also fantasy adventure. It's for ages six to nine, roughly, and each one features different Greek gods and goddesses who are about 10 years old and trying to discover their destinies and fight their titan enemies. And so these are just some of the books we have at the library. Mythology is something we have a lot of books about, so please check that out. Um, and now I'm going to start telling you about a Greek hero named Odysseus. Has anyone ever heard of him? You might not have because a lot of times kids in high school read about him. Um, but his stories are well known and I think you'll like them. Here's what some people thought he might look like. So this is a statue um, of Odysseus. He was a great hero, renowned for courage leadership and intelligence. He even came up with a plan to use a huge wooden horse to win a war that the Greeks fought against the Trojans. Now it could have looked a little bit like this horse. I have a horse right here. This is a wooden horse that I had at home. Um, but the horse that Odysseus created would have had to be a lot bigger. Do you know why? Do you know that story? Well, the story says that the soldiers, the Greek soldiers, hid inside of that gigantic wooden horse and um, their competitors or their enemies, the Trojans, thought that it was an offering to the gods, um, to, to Athena that I just showed you. And so they wanted Athena to favor them, so they brought the horse into their city and unfortunately, the soldiers got out of the horse and the Gr Greeks won that war. Have you heard the story of Odysseus and the Cyclops? Here is what some people thought that a Cyclops might look like. Cyclops were monsters and giants with one eye in the center of their foreheads. Now, this looks like a man and it looks like his eyes are closed, but actually he has no eyes. And if you look closely, you can see he has one eye on the top of his forehead. So he was actually a Cyclops. Well, when Odysseus was returning from the Trojan War that I told you about, he and his men ended up on an island inhabited by Cyclops. Now the Cyclops tended large flocks of sheep, which they often ate whole. They were very hungry because they were giants. The men ended up resting in a cave. Well, they didn't know that the cave belonged to Polyphemus, who was a cyclops and the son of the god of the sea, Poseidon. When Polyphemus returned home with his sheep, he rolled an enormous stone in front of his cave. It was so big and heavy that only giants could make it budge. So Odysseus and his men were trapped in the cave with the cyclops. Polyphemus ate two of Odysseus's men for dinner, along with a bunch of sheep and two more men for breakfast. He couldn't believe his luck to have a stash of tasty humans right there in his cave. However, Odysseus did not panic. You have to remember, he was a Greek hero. He was smart and brave and he came up with a plan. So he introduced himself to Polyphemus and he said, my name's nobody. I am definitely not a Greek hero. My name is nobody, so just so you know what to call me before you eat me. He waited until the Cyclops fell asleep and then he took a spear and he heated it up in the giant's fire, red hot, and he climbed carefully up on Polyphemus's chest and he stabbed the Cyclops right in the eye with that spear. The giant screamed 
and that brought his friends from the other side of the island who came running, two other cyclops. Are you being attacked? Are you all right? They called through the, through the door, through the cave entrance. Of course, there was the big rock in front, but they didn't want to move the rock because maybe Polyphemus was just having a bad dream and they didn't want all his sheep to get out. So Odysseus, remembering the name that Odysseus had given him, Polyphemus yelled out, nobody's hurting me, nobody's hurting me. And so the other Cyclops said, okay, nobody's hurting you. Well, they went back to their home on the other side of the island. They figured he was having a nightmare. Well, the next morning, you would think Polyphemus was all done because he had his eye poked out, but no, he was a very fearsome giant. He was not beaten yet. He felt his way along the cave walls and he got to the entrance of his cave and he opened the door of the cave. They moved the rock away just the slightest bit so he could let his sheep out one by one. And he felt the back of each sheep to make sure that no humans were getting out because he was determined as ever to eat all those men, including Odysseus. Well, imagine his surprise when he heard Odysseus's voice outside the cave. What do you think happened? How did they get out? All the men were out too. And uh, Odysseus yelled at him, you've been outsmarted. We hung onto the sheep underneath their bellies. And he laughed at Polyphemus and all the men laughed and taunted him because they had won. However, they had one more thing they had to do can you imagine what that was? They had to get off this island. So they had to get back to their boat. And this is a picture by an artist named Arnold Bachlin that shows Odysseus and his men escaping from the Cyclops in their boat. And Odysseus is continuing to taunt Polyphemus as he and his men are trying to get off the island. So we saw two different versions of what a Cyclops could have looked like. Of course there it's a made-up creature but in this picture he's got a lot of shaggy brown hair he's you can see he's almost as big as the boat um, he doesn't wear many clothes I guess if you're a Cyclops living on an island you don't need clothes it was a tropical island um, so what do you think a Cyclops might look like could you draw it that might be a fun thing to draw your own version of a Cyclops, or you could draw your own version of the Trojan horse, because the horse I showed you was a Swedish horse. It wouldn't have been the same in Greece. Those are some things you could do if you need something to do when you're at home. And I have just a few jokes to tell you about Cyclops before we end the program today. I think you'll like these a lot. The first one is, why do Cyclops get along so well? Because they always see eye to eye. Because <laughs> they only have one eye. Why are Cyclops so competitive? Did you ever think about that? I didn't know they were so competitive. But they always have their eye on the prize. And the last one, how did Cyclops get so smart? because they weren't actually dumb. They were, they were rumored to be very smart. They got, he got smart by reading the encyclopedia, which you can get at the library or online. So, and I have a couple riddles as well about things with one eye. I bet you'll get some of these. What has only one eye but cannot see? Can you answer that riddle? How about a sewing needle? What has one big eye and makes a mess wherever it goes? How about a hurricane? Has one big eye? All right. I hope you thought guys enjoyed the story and the, all the books about mythology. Now, if you want to get some books from the library about mythology, there are two ways. You can go to our website www.cumberland.lib.nc.us and you can put books on hold and your parent can help you to pick them up through our catalog 
You can also call 910-483-7727 and ask library staff to help you find what you want. And then you can also get a parent to help you pick up your books and other materials. So thank you so much for watching. I enjoyed being with you today and we'll see you next time. Until then, keep on reading.